These days, we mix sugar syrup up and put it in totes. Uh, wasn't, doesn't seem like that long ago. We were hand mixing into barrels and using a gasoline-driven gear pump, which uh, I don't miss at all. I prefer these electric pumps we're using now because they only turn on when there's a demand, whereas the gasoline engine gear pumps had to run all the time. And if you're feeding a yard slowly as you work it, these electric pumps work much better. Right up there in that little box is a pump we're currently using. It's a 12 volt gear pump. I'll take that cover off so we can have a better look at it. I really like it, it works great. This is the intake hose that we put inside the tote. Let's see, we always put, let's see if this will show it. We always put a screen well, I don't know if that's going to show up in the camera or not. There's eighth inch, eighth inch hardware cloth inside there that catches dead bees and debris and stuff that we don't want to go through the pump. And that will get dropped down into the tote. And then on this end, we have an inch and a quarter uh, quick coupler that pumps that, uh, that just plugs right into that pump right there. I like things to be quick, clean, and simple if I can, whenever possible. I have four Dodge trucks like this one, and three of them are set up for pumping syrup. And all of them have quick couplers on the pumps and the hoses. I try to make the parts interchangeable. Just like in the honey house, I, I like all the hoses and couplers and everything to be interchangeable. Try to do the same thing with the trucks if I can. We put plugs in the quick couplers so that when it's not being used, bees and dirt and garbage doesn't get in there. I do the same thing on our intake hoses. Every intake hose has a cap on it so debris can't get into the hose. This stuff isn't cheap. These brass fittings are expensive, but I kind of like it that way because it makes it so quick and easy. Um, this is inch and a quarter pipe, three-quarter rubber hose for the intake hose. Sometimes we'll put a little plastic bag or maybe a rag around the pipe where it goes in the hole in the tote to act as a gasket to make sure bees can't get in there. You know, we can get quite a few dead bees in our tote of syrup if we don't keep that hole sealed during a dearth period. We have a 10-foot rubber hose as a leader hose to the down pipe. Uh, 10 feet is long enough to reach four totes on the truck bed, which we do do occasionally. Uh, there have been times when we carry four totes at one time if we have a lot of feeding to do at one time. And of course, this system would work good with drums, too. I tried a lot of different pumps over the years. I'm really happy with this one. Um, when I researched it online, it looked like it was mainly used in marine applications for pumping water supply on fishing boats and things like that. This is a Marco brand. It's a 12 or 24 volt, takes a 25 amp breaker. Uh, again, the reason I like these electric pumps is because they're on demand. And I think this one's set at about 35 pounds on and off, which is, which is perfect. Um, if you don't want much more pressure than that, when you pull the trigger on your, on your nozzle, it can kind of give you a blast effect coming out of the nozzle we use for filling jars and buckets. Anyway, I purchased this pump from Depco Pump in Florida. I'll put a link to their outfit in my 
video description. I've been real happy with that business. If you look closely, you can sometimes get parts and pumps online from Amazon and places like that a little cheaper. But at this point in my life, I've learned to deal with professionals that can provide good service and give me parts and answer questions when I need it. I've got it hooked up to a one inch reinforced vinyl tube that goes all the way to the back of the truck goes down behind the headboard and then follows the frame all the way to the rear where it hooks directly into the reel. Um, it used to be that I would have an array of PVC pipe and elbows and things like that, and I've learned that that just causes a lot of restri extra restriction. Every time you put an elbow or a fitting in a pipe, it causes more restriction. And uh, uh, this uh, vinyl tube goes all the way to the rear, and I think it's our... I've noticed a difference. It definitely gives us a lot better flow than having one inch PVC go through an array of fittings and elbows to the back of the truck. Here's where the reinforced tubing comes out from underneath the truck and hooks in, into the swivel on the reel. Everything's one inch, as few fittings as possible. I even went with a one inch reel. It's meant for one inch hose and we belled it down to a three-quarter inch fitting so we could put three-quarter inch standard water hose on the reel. It's a hundred foot of hose and uh, the reason I went with a one inch reel is because it uh, it's one inch throughout. Even the swivel everywhere has a one inch opening. Almost every other reel I ran across that was meant for water hose had very small orifices going through the swivel. Some of them were even down to three-eighths, which really causes a lot of restriction. This one has an electric motor on it. There's a 12-volt motor up in there. If you can see it with the camera, I'm not sure. A 100-foot rubber hose. I like rubber hoses. I do not like vinyl hoses. Um, I'll put a link to this reel in the place I bought it from in the video description. It's really a nice reel. Again, not real cheap, but it's w worth the money if you're going to be doing this all day. And that's just a standard um, fuel nozzle that you might buy at Tractor Supply. We, I think we get this one at uh, Northern Tool. It used to be called Northern Hydraulics, and that seems to work pretty good. And it's one inch also. We've uh, reduced the hose fittings down or I should say belt the fittings up to one inch to go into this nozzle. You can get these in half inch and three quarter, but you're better off with the one inch to keep your flow good. It has a little lock on it that you can release so it'll swivel easy. We keep it locked going down the road. Don't want that hose coming out of there, of course. And that uh, nozzle just hooks up on a little hook that's up on the truck frame up in there. I have a button here for the electric. And then inside the toolbox, we have a rheostat and a solenoid that handles all the electricity. I like this reel. Make things a lot easier. We used to just coil hoses up on the truck bed, and that's fine. It actually gives you a little more flow if you don't have all those fittings coming to the rear of the truck. And what we found out when we were traveling is that the trucks would be so, so full that even a place for a coiled up hose uh, became a challenge. We just liked having it under the truck bed. The hose is always there. It's always with us everywhere we go. It makes it really easy. So this reel has an electric motor on it with a variable speed adjuster and it sure makes it handy when we're coiling up the hose. And then you'll just hook it on that little hook up there on the frame. We got a little lock on the side of the reel, keep it from on rolling while we're driving. That works pretty good. Thank you, Seth.
We like to take the hose to the bucket instead of hauling buckets from the truck to the hive. I want to show this pump because I think some smaller beekeepers might find this attractive. It's a way of pumping sugar syrup without breaking the bank. Um, this is an old pump. I used this thing a long time ago with success back when I was just pumping barrels or buckets of sugar syrup. It, um, it's a flow jet, as you can see. It's a 4.9 gallon per minute pump, 12 volt. It comes out of the factory with a 45 PSI switch. If you look around on Amazon or Northern Tool, you can see a lot of pumps like this. I would caution that um, the higher the volume, the higher the pressure tends to be on these things. This one came with a 45 pound PSI switch and if you go much beyond that, it makes it real hard to use those fuel nozzles. It makes it hard to pull the trigger. You get kind of a blast effect when you pull the trigger. You can see here I'd written on this thing. We, we switched this switch out for a 30 pound or a 30 PSI switch, which was ideal for this pump. It's rated at 4.9 gallons per minute, 12 volts, of course. Let's see if I can read the amps. It's a uh, 13 amps, and we used to just, just have a marine battery sitting on the truck bed that we hooked this pump up to, and we used, the, the, it comes with these things for hooking up hose, hose barbs, I guess you'd call them. Anyway, that's a good option for somebody that doesn't want to spend a lot of money. It will work.